At this time five years ago, there was a 5 foot 10, 120 pound point guard in South Carolina working on his game with his stepdad after just finishing eighth grade. Five years later, that kid is 6 foot 7, 285, and the NBA's brightest prospect in over a decade and a half. You probably know him as Zion Williams. From slamming on 5 foot white kids in high school, to dropping unprecedented numbers at Duke, to being picked first in the draft, Zion has risen in just a few years to become the most highly touted, hyped up prospect since LeBron. I mean, it all just fits. The 6'7", 285 frame, which blows my mind to even say out loud. The tight guard-like handle, and of course, the gravity-defying bounce. Shoot, even the name fits. I mean, what screams superstar more than a name like Zion? But he wasn't always expected to be the next LeBron. In fact, dude wasn't always even expected to play in the NBA. So today, we're gonna take a look at how that skinny, small town middle schooler became the absolute beast we see today. What's good everybody, and welcome back to the channel, where today, we're gonna chronicle Zion's journey to the national spotlight. If you enjoy this type of content, make sure to drop a like and subscribe. Your support is always appreciated. All right, so we all remember the insane high school clips that helped make Zion a viral internet sensation before the guy even turned 17 years old. But before we get into that, Let's actually rewind all the way back to the start, before the bright lights, windmills, and sold out crowds. Zion Williamson was born in North Carolina on July 6, 2000, to a college track athlete as a mother and a high school All-American D lineman for a father, who happened to measure in at a monstrous 6'4", 270 himself. In other words, athleticism runs through his veins. The kid was born to be a beast. But still, his greatness definitely wasn't preordained. After all, both of his parents only ever made it to the college level. And fittingly, Zion explained that until he reached age five, he actually thought college was the highest level an athlete could reach. And so his biggest dream was just to be able to play college basketball. Little did he know, he'd make it a whole hell of a lot further than that. Coincidentally, it was also at five years old that Zion's basketball journey began. And right from the jump, he was clearly already miles ahead of the curve. As the kids somehow found a way to suit up for the Sumter Falcons AAU team that just so happened to consist solely of nine-year-olds. Now think about that. That's a kindergartner playing with kids damn near double his age. But I guess looking at him now, we shouldn't be so surprised. Apparently the guy's always been a man-child. And by the time Zion himself was nine, he was apparently getting up no later than 5 a.m. before school every day to run drills and put up shots with his stepdad, who happened to be a former point guard for Clemson. Naturally, the young kid was trained to follow in his dad's footsteps. So that's what Zion did learning to play the game as a floor general, all the way through his childhood up to eighth grade. But it was that year, from the end of eighth grade to the beginning of ninth, that that boy began to grow into the monster of a man we see today. Again, his stepdad claims that at the end of eighth grade, Zion was only five foot 10, 120 pounds, hoping to start a point guard for his high school, Spartanburg Day School. But before the summer had ended, he had shot up to six foot three, 175 pounds easily a size big enough to play center for his team. Not that that's saying much based on the size of the kids he was playing with, but I mean, take that as you will. Oh yeah, and he wasn't even close to being done growing either. But despite this initial growth spurt and very impressive freshman and sophomore seasons for his school, putting up well over 20 a game both years, Zion was still far from any national recruiting board, let alone any All-American discussions or top 10. And as Zion entered his junior year with his most prominent scholarship offer only being from the local Wofford College, it was hard to see how the guy would be able to garner any big time national interest. I mean, up to that point, Zion wasn't even on the radar of the vast majority of D1 programs. But according to GQ, it was right around the start of that 11th grade season that Zion really started gaining weight. And when that growth spurt finally hit, it did not want to stop. Zion himself explained that over the course of the last two years in high school, he picked up 100 pounds. Yeah, you heard me right, 100 freaking pounds. In other words, by his senior year, he had literally more than doubled his weight from just four years earlier. Oh, and don't forget the extra four inches in height he also added along the way. To put this in perspective, for most NBA centers, 275 pounds is too much weight to be able to carry around up and down the court. I mean, literally the only player in the league that weighs more than that currently is Boban Marjanovic, who's seven foot three and may possibly be the slowest and least athletic human to ever play professional sport in history. No offense to Boban. But somehow, Zion not only carries that weight around, he flies with it. And he actually says the additional weight amplifies his gain. Describing the weight gain, Zion explained, quote, 
People always say you have to grow into your body, but for me, it wasn't even growing into my body. The more weight came, it didn't phase me. It made me faster, stronger. It helped me become a more versatile player." End quote. Not long after this second insane growth spurt, Zion played in the Adidas League around the start of his junior year, where scouts could immediately see that there was a man playing amongst boys on the court. Along with his newfound size, Zion also picked up something else in the process. That freakish athleticism that even he says he didn't see coming. Unsurprisingly, the 16-year-old phenom posted a breakout performance that led scouts and fans alike to begin taking notice of the kid that looked like an NFL linebacker out there flying up and down the court. During the next circuit stop in Atlanta, Zion averaged 23 points and 12 rebounds through 4 games while throwing down slams that the world hadn't even seen attempted since Vince Carter. Damn near overnight, Zion became both an internet superstar and a top 20 prospect in his high school class. Zion himself explained that, quote, his high school team doesn't play a national schedule, so college coaches didn't come out. But after that second Adidas session in Atlanta, that's when his college offers started to blow up. The kid who had one notable offer after his sophomore season ended his junior year with a list of 36, including pretty much every powerhouse you could think of in the country. Oh, and there was also the part where he jumped all the way up to the number two rank in the nation, only behind future Duke teammate RJ Barrett. But all the praise and recognition definitely didn't come without critics and doubters. And being 100% honest, I was one of them at the time. I mean, okay, let's be real here. Obviously the first thing anybody thought of after seeing a Zion highlight was that this dude was amazing. And don't get me wrong, I was no exception to that. I mean, I had never seen anything like it. It legitimately looked like somebody had put LeBron on a court with a bunch of middle schoolers. But that's exactly why the next thought enters your mind. Wait a second, who is this guy playing against? And why does everybody else on the court look 13 years old? I mean, highlight after highlight that came out, we were seeing these insane feats of athleticism, but they were coming against kids that looked half his age and half his size. This obvious lack of competition raised questions for a lot of people, including myself, I'm not gonna lie, about just how legit this guy really was. But at Duke, it didn't take long for him to shut us up and show the world that it didn't matter who you put on him, he could make anybody look like a little kid. As soon as Duke started its preseason exhibition trip to Canada, Zion dominated. And it took approximately three preseason games for Williamson to show that he was going to be a whole lot more than just a high school star. Despite Duke opening the season at number four in the AP poll, just like he had done all his life, Zion quickly made sure to set the record straight and raise that ranking to where it belonged. In the first game of the season, as a one point underdog against number two ranked Kentucky, Zion just absolutely imposed his will posting a dominating 28 points on 11 of 13 shots, while leading the Blue Devils to a 34-point slaughter of Kentucky and handing John Calipari the worst defeat of his coaching career along the way. Keep in mind, this was his first official game. But even after just one, it was immediately clear that Zion wasn't all flashy dunks and chase down blocks. He had a toughness and a motor on both sides of the court that made him a tremendous defensive player and on-court leader for the dynamic Duke squad. As the season went on, it didn't take long for the team to snag that number one overall ranking. And it also didn't take long to realize who the true number one player in the country was. And I'll give you a hint, it damn sure wasn't RJ. Despite a couple of upset losses here and there, the Blue Devils more or less ran through their schedule with Zion leading the way, until they hit a bit of a snag during one of the most anticipated matchups of the entire college season, and what was supposed to be one of Duke's most exciting games. Of course, I'm talking about the Duke-UNC matchup where we all know Zion busted through his shoe and sprained his knee, leaving the entire basketball world wondering if this was the last time we would see the stud suit up in blue and white, and if Nike had blown its chance to land their biggest star since LeBron. But fortunately, Zion isn't one to disappoint, and fans were ecstatic to hear that Williamson would be returning from injury to play in the ACC tournament, and he didn't miss a beat. After missing roughly three weeks with the injury, Zion made his return in the opening round of the ACC tournament against Syracuse and picked right up where he left off, scoring 29 along with 14 boards and 5 steals on an absolutely absurd 13 of 13 shooting from the field. The man literally didn't miss once. I mean, who does that? Nobody. That's just, I don't even know what to say about it. But if that's not a statement game, I don't know what is. After pulling out dubs over the top two other teams in the conference in UNC and Florida State, Duke cruised on to win the ACC crown and headed into the NCAA tournament as the number one seed with the natty chip in their sights. Unfortunately, the boys in blue would meet their match in the Elite Eight 
and run out of luck against Tom Izzo's overlooked Michigan State squad. Falling short of the chip didn't take anything away from the absolutely historic season from Zion, who cemented himself as one of the most legendary college basketball players ever in just one season. To put his greatness into perspective, think about the fact that he finished the year with the highest box score plus minus since Sports Reference's leaderboard began in 2010 and he handily beat out the next guy in that statistic, who just so happened to be some little old player from Kentucky named, oh, Anthony Davis. Long story short, Zion has had one of the most meteoric rises to stardom ever documented, and he's still far from finished his journey. He's one of the rare cases of the viral high school star that has truly lived up to or even surpassed the hype and expectations placed on him so far. The last guy who did that at this high of a level plays in LA and happens to be a top two player of all time. But like all the great ones, the questions surrounding his game have only grown louder after his legendary college season. With tons of people questioning Zion's ability to translate his game to the next level. Is he too heavy? Will he be able to handle the 82 game season at his weight? Is he too short for his position? Is his jumper too slow? At this point, he's gotten it all. And once again, in a weird way, I feel like the questions are at least somewhat justified. I mean, it's impossible to deny that Zion has some holes in his game. And honestly, it's hard to imagine a 6'6 six six power forward who isn't a great shooter become a superstar in today's NBA. Because we just haven't seen it. But with all that said, all Zion's done throughout his career so far is defy expectations and prove doubters wrong. I bet against him once, and I'm sure as hell not making that same mistake again. I don't know how he's gonna do it, but Zion's made a habit of doing things nobody's ever seen before. So I'm just gonna trust that he'll find a way. I will say one thing. It's definitely gonna help to have so many other talented guys around him. From Drew Holiday, to Lonzo, to Brandon Ingram, the Pelicans are gonna be insanely fun to watch and potentially insanely scary to play against. Man, just thinking about it gets me hyped. I for one cannot wait for opening night. And on the big picture side of things, I think it's important to take a step back at times and appreciate when you're witnessing history. Because that's what we're all getting right now every time Zion steps on a court. For all of us who weren't old enough to experience the hype surrounding LeBron's come up, this is the closest thing we've ever gotten, and probably the closest thing we're gonna get for at least a while. So really, regardless of how the guy turns out, I'm just excited that I get the chance to witness it. Anyways, that's all I got for this one, guys. Let me know in the comments if you think Zion can live up to the hype. If you're new, hit the subscribe button. Until next time, keep balling, fellas. I'm out.